Did you know you can change the world by eating? Grab a snack and stay tuned. How can I eat my way to a better world? This is the University of the Netherlands. So when you stand in the supermarket, do you know where the food you're buying comes from? And do you know if it's sustainably produced? Maybe you just trust the supermarket you shop at makes good choices for you. Or perhaps you look on the package of the food products you're buying for an eco-label to help you make a sustainable choice. But then again, perhaps many of you don't do these things. What I'd like to talk to you about today is that your choices as a consumer matter, but not just the choice of which product to buy, also the place where you buy it, and even the bank that facilitates the transactions. They all play a role in our food system. Your actions as a consumer matter, but perhaps not in the way you think they do. In this lecture, I'll explain how product choices, the market, financial institutions, but also food producers on the other side of the world are all linked. And I'll explain how consumers, consumer demand, can make a change. That means you and me. So when you sit down to dinner, do you ever wonder where the fish on your plate is coming from? It might be local, but chances are, at least here in Europe, that it's not. Seafood, including fish, but also animals like shrimp, lobsters and mussels, and plants like algae and seaweed, is the most valuably traded food internationally. In Europe, 65% of our fish is imported, and in places like the US and Australia, that's even 90%. There are also two completely different sources of that fish on your plate. It could come from a fishery, meaning it was caught by fishes in a river, or along a coast, or on the open sea. Or it could come from aquaculture, meaning a farm where it was grown for your consumption. Today, fisheries and aquaculture contribute roughly equally to the total live weight of seafood production and together play an important role in food and nutrition security all around the world. As a consumer, you not only benefit from eating seafood, you're also increasing demand for its production. For years and years, our food system has been based on expansion, producing more and more food. It's actually only very recently that we started to be concerned about the way it's produced, meaning is it sustainable and is it safe? And by choosing to buy a product based on these questions, you express a demand in terms of quantity, but also importantly, in terms of quality. That means that the market where you buy fish is not just a place where you buy certain things for a certain price, it is a means of social connectivity where people often on the other side of the world respond to demand, not only in terms of price or volume, but also in terms of values, the values that you may hold for more sustainable production. A common way to express a demand for sustainability is to buy products that are certified. When looking for seafood in the supermarket, you might have come across one of these eco labels, or perhaps you've used a ratings wallet card or a smartphone app. But have you ever stopped to think about how these labels and ratings work? Well, if we want a certified product, or if a government demands a certain standard, then the supermarket is likely to sell those goods. That in turn means that the supermarket, the retailer, is going to respond. And in turn, your message for a sustainable product is going down an entire supply chain of importers, exporters, processors, and eventually all the way to the producer. Then it's up to the producer to meet certain production standards, to be able to sell their produce in the market. Sounds easy enough, but the communication of demand for sustainable production through these global value chains is highly complex. For a start, only about 10% of seafood production makes it over an international border. And fishers and fish farmers who do sell fish to international markets may not even know they're doing so. Imagine a tuna caught by a fisherman on a remote island in Indonesia. Once that fish has left the beach where it was landed, it might pass through three sets of hands before reaching the capital, Jakarta. And when exported, it might go to a processing factory in Vietnam or a cannery in Thailand before being imported to the Netherlands and then transported to a supermarket in a completely different part of Europe. In the face of such complexity, communicating your demand for a sustainably certified tuna through this value chain requires considerable transparency and trust by producers, by the processors, the supermarkets, and finally by you as a consumer. But in spite of these complexities, the message is, the message is making it to at least some of those producers. In the Netherlands, for example, more than 80% of seafood on the supermarket shelves is certified as sustainable. But if you look closer, you'll see that there are only a handful of species actually being sold. 
Put into global context, only 10% of the seafood produced is certified, and a further 15% is rated as a sustainable choice. That means that the fishers and the fish farmers producing 75 to 90% of the world's seafood are not responding to your demand for more sustainable production. So why is that? Well, part of the idea of motivating fishers and fish farmers to produce sustainably relies on the idea that they get a price signal that makes its way down from the supermarket checkout. That means that the producer knows that a consumer is willing to pay a certain price for a sustainable product. In many instances, this signal simply does not make it down to producers, either because others in the global seafood value chain, you know, they take this value away from them. So they don't earn more money from producing a sustainable product. Or it could be because they sell to a market where there is simply no demand for sustainable seafood. But when this signal does make it down the chain successfully, there are essentially two groups of farmers who might respond. On the one hand, there are those that are, who are able to respond by improving how they produce and sell their fish. And on the other hand, there are those that get the signal and want to improve, but are unable to make the changes necessary to meet your demand. Imagine again, you are a fish farmer and your family has a farm in Vietnam. You've invested in land, you've dug a hole and put some fish in it. And suddenly this market opens up in Europe and you sell your fish there, but you're facing all sorts of issues. Perhaps there's a disease or the water quality is not so great. Let's face it, fish farming is a vulnerable system and you don't have too many ways to get out of the system once you're invested in it. And let's also face it, what you're looking at is a big hole in the ground. And all of a sudden, these people in Europe are saying, you can no longer sell to them because the water next to your farm is polluted. That's a huge headache for you. Perhaps you don't even own the land you're farming on so you're unable to make the investments necessary. Or the water source you're drawing from is a common resource. It's shared amongst many farmers. And let alone that, to sell to the market, you need to fill in a huge amount of documentation. You need to measure a whole bunch of things. It's not to say you don't want to. The problem is that you don't have the capability to control everything that's happening on your farm. Even if you can fill out the paperwork and you can change the practices on your farm, it's not going to change the land or the water you're drawing from. Perhaps there's a factory, for example, that's down the road and you have absolutely no influence on. And perhaps there are also other farms or other agricultural sectors in the area that you live. Your capability to make a change to how you produce is highly constrained. But if enough farmers in your region were to comply, maybe that would enable you to make the changes necessary to be more sustainable, both for your benefit directly and in the eyes of those consumers. So buying certified fish is a first step to supporting sustainable seafood. But what I wanna show you with this example is that we're missing out on a lot of people who at this time don't have the capability to produce sustainably. So far, I've sketched the problem for the seafood industry, but actually this story applies to most of the food industry. And at this point, it may also seem overwhelming. And you might be asking, what does my behavior as a consumer have to do with the capabilities of food producers? To give an answer to that, we first need to look at who has the possibility to help producers develop the capabilities to produce sustainably. The answer is that it's not going to be any single organization it requires a whole bunch of organizations to come together and enable those producers to act in a more responsible way. But at the same time, they should not undermine their ability to support themselves and of course, maintain a livelihood. Doesn't sound like it's something we as individuals can do much about, right? Well, maybe we do have a say. As a food consumer, it's not only about what products you buy, it's also about where you shop. Supermarkets in the Netherlands have made pledges to only sell sustainable products. To make sure they have enough product on their shelves, some of them have sought to either directly support producers or partner with organisations who can help those producers develop the capabilities for more sustainable food production. You can shop for this kind of support on their websites and choose for a supermarket which helps local producers. You're also a consumer when you decide who to bank with, take insurance out with, and which pension funds to subscribe to. Do you know where your bank or pension fund invests your savings? Do they aim to support food producers both in your country and in export countries? Well, some do. And you can base your financial choices on how they make these choices. Again, 
go shopping online and see whether these companies report on the social, environmental and governance performance for supporting sustainability. You can make your choices based on whether they report publicly on their performance. If they do report, you can check how they support food producers to be more sustainable through their investments or insurance policies. All of those organisations, they don't just exist by themselves, they exist in the context of consumers. Because we as consumers don't just buy products in the supermarkets, we also consume the very same financial products that also support the capability of food producers to adopt more sustainable practices. Our bank accounts, insurance, our pensions. And the ways we consume their products determines their choices. In the end, you as a consumer matter, but not perhaps in the way you think you do. Thanks for listening.